So first of all, when you're dealing with file systems, where do file systems usually live? On a disk. So it's really helpful to know what disks are actually present in your system. And there's a couple tools that'll let you do that. The one I like to use is LSBLK, which is like an abbreviation for list block devices. LSBLK will show you a tree of not just the devices you have, but what partitions are on them. And if they're mounted, it'll show you where they're mounted and whatnot. And you can see I've got a couple things mounted here, some of which is for a later demo, ignore the, the man behind the curtain. <laughs> the other one is block ID, so BLK ID. Similar output, except it'll also give you things like the UUIDs and some more information about what those different partitions are, right? And what, like how they're mounted and where they're mounted, things like that. So block ID. Another one is good old fashioned mount. Now mount, in my opinion, has gotten a little harder to read over the years. On older systems, it was very straightforward because all the stuff that was mounted was just like block devices. Now there's a whole bunch of virtual file systems and whatnot that go into play. So this is, in my opinion, not as easy to read as it used to be. However, it shows you everything that's mounted, right? So if you need to know what those virtual file systems are, this is where you're going to find them. But just looking for, okay, where's DevSDB nowadays? It's buried in the output here. All right. If you just do mount without any options, it shows you the output that I just gave you. Mount is also the tool that lets you mount and not unmount. There's, a, there's another tool called unmount, which will let you mount and unmount file systems. So you saw before I had that mount for dev SDA3 on slash mount. So we'll just use that as a guinea pig here. Right, this will unmount it. And now if I do mount, you'll see SDA3 is no longer in the list. Again, hard to see, right? But if there's another tool that we're gonna talk about in a second called DF, I find that to be a simpler output, right? So you can see just the things that are mounted and how much space there is in the, on them. So now, of course we unmounted it. I'm gonna remount it because it's important to have that thing mounted. Okay, so what I'm telling mount here is the type of the file system, which normally you don't have to do, but it's, it's good practice. It'll generally figure out what it is that it's mounting. So I've told it type ext4 because I know that's the file system format that's on SDA3. And I'm putting it in slash mount. And now if I did mount again, there it is in the list again. DF again will show me dev SDA3 in the list again. There's some handy command line options to DF as well. There's DF-H, which says it gives me a human readable output to the, the space that's available and in use and whatnot. There's also the dash I command line option, which tells me the inodes that are free, which we're going to talk about a little bit more in a, uh, a future example here. Another great one for looking at space is DU, right? DU will show you everything, in, everything that's currently uh, in the tree that you're in and tell you the size of it. There's also command line options that'll make it give you a human readable output. Sorry, DU, not DH. Right, and now it shows it in K or Meg or Gig. Right, if I go to slash, it's a little easier to uh, to look at. See, but it's really wordy because there's so much in the file system. There is max depth equals one. Will give you just the current directory structures, top level directories, and what their sizes are. Right, so you can see. Excuse me, you can see probably an easier to read output. And then you can say, oh, it looks like user is taking up the most space. And you can go into user and do the same thing, right? All right, and the last really interesting utility is LSOF, which will list open file handles, LSOF. And again, whole bunch of output. Usually I parse this through grep or some other tool to try to filter out what I'm looking for. So I don't know. If I wanted to like grep for, we're going to guess that something is probably open inside of Etsy. I don't know. It'll show you anything that's open from within whatever I grep for. And that's how is your grep foo? How good can you filter using grep is basically how this, how good you can get with that filter. All right. And those are the tools we talked about. Scott, did I miss anything you want to call out? I just wanted to point out that if you could pull up that LSOF one more time, 
the sure. other field of data. It shows you, of course, the file that is opened, but yep. it also gives you the process ID of the thing that has it open and the name of the thing that has it open. And there's some other stuff right. like what device it lives on. Other things are less important, but I think the key ones here are the name of the, the process ID of the process, and then further down the line, the actual file or directory that it has open. But yeah, I think that'll do it.